Thank you, Pascal. Um, colleagues, friends, and visitors, guests, you're very, very welcome. I'd like to start by uh, saying that at about 10 to 9 this morning on Morning Ireland, which is the biggest, most listened to radio program in the country, at least 600,000 people listening most days, is the premier news and current affairs show uh, from the state-owned the state broadcaster RTE. At about 10 to 9, they broadcast uh, an interview with the Polish ambassador, which they had to precede with an apology. Uh, they apologized for an inaccurate and misleading report yesterday, the previous day, in which it was alleged that uh, an opportunity was given to express the view that Polish people in Ireland are scroungers taking welfare payments that they shouldn't. Intriguingly, this was based on a report in a newspaper, which was based on an interview which was done in Polish with a Polish woman living in Ireland, which was mistranslated. Uh, some of you I know have seen the article in the Irish Times which kind of corrects what the, the Irish Independent, I beg your pardon, which uh, uh, had the story yesterday. It corrects it without, as a, my colleague Aidan White points out, without apology. RT apologized. But I bring this up to show how timely is the work that you're doing. Uh, for many, many years, Ireland has been, as a peripheral co country, a small population country, a not very rich country, has been relatively isolated from the stream of international affairs and intercultural contacts. Uh, most of the intercultural contacts we would have had would have been through our emigrants, through the diaspora in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Canada, Australia. Uh, but that has changed quite radically in recent years. First of all, we're sending our emigrants, our new wave of emigrants, to a far bigger range of countries. Secondly, in recent years, as a relatively prosperous member of the European Union, we've had immigrants for probably the first time, certainly in large numbers. And the Polish community is in fact now the largest non-Irish, non-English community in the Republic of Ireland. But we have many other people who have come to live and work here, mostly happily, I hope, uh, from the Baltic countries, the Balkan countries, and from what we used to call Eastern Europe. Uh, and of course, Ireland as a relatively free, relatively prosperous country has also become a destination for people who seek asylum from more repressive regimes from poorer places in other parts of the world, which has presented us with real challenges, which has challenged uh, the racism that is in our society, a formerly completely white society, no longer so, presented us with challenges in interpreting what do other people mean to the point that we've had to, on the state broadcaster this morning, apologize to 600,000 people. So it's absolutely timely what, you, what you're doing. School of Communication is very proud of its research record. We take our responsibilities as academics seriously, our responsibilities to the academic community, but also to the wider society which we hope to serve. So questions of interculturalism, questions of diversity, questions of tolerance, questions of mutual respect, are vital to the work that we do here with our students uh, and with our colleagues. We have a, 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 we would say, proud reputation as well of international collab collaboration in research. Pascal Preston, my colleague Pascal, has been a leading, uh, a, a leading light in this, and we hope to develop it. We have a number of quite big research collaboration ventures in planning. I can't say anything about them at the moment, but I hope that within months we'll be making some very big announcements. So you're all very, very welcome here, uh, and bless the work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.